All right, welcome back to New Zero Land. It's super loud, sorry. Today, Jen is going to ride the Harley Livewire, the only one in Wellington. All right, so this is it, the Harley Livewire. By now, we've all seen Long Way Up, and if you already had an electric motorcycle at the time, you probably wanted to throw your TV out the window. We'll have to call for a diesel generator to come out to charge the electric motorcycle so we can... They did everything wrong. They took untested prototypes they'd never ridden before and didn't plan any of their charging stops. And then they bought a bus. So by the end of the series, I felt like Ewan and Charlie did more to discourage motorcyclists from going electric than they did to show what these things are actually capable of. And when the production Harley Livewires finally came out at the staggering price of 30,000 US dollars, which somehow ended up being 54,000 New Zealand dollars, Yes, that's really how much they cost here. We all expected this bike to be overpriced garbage, but it's not, not by a long shot. There are less than 10 live wires in all of New Zealand, and the one in Wellington is owned by another dude from California named Dan. What is it about all the foreigners riding electric bikes? Well, Dan is super cool and said, hey, go ride it, and make sure you go on the highway so you can see how fast it goes. So here we are testing out his insanely expensive, insanely rare Harley live wire. And you guys asked for more Jen in my videos, so she's gonna ride it. Oh, I'm so excited. Oh, I feel the heartbeat. It's like... It's so loud. God, can you feel it? Yep. Yeah. Oh, it feels good. This is great. <laughs> it's smooth, it's light. Ish. I know it's like he said it's 500 pounds, but it feels really comfortable. I like the fact that it's short and I can ride it low center. Of, oh, puppy! Oh, you, you, you! Uh, low center of gravity is great. Wow, I can't get over how strong the regen is on this. It's like I don't even have to use a brake. I bet that saves on the brake pads. I feel as if it's a hoverboard. It doesn't even feel like I'm on the ground. I just feel like I'm floating. That's how smooth this thing is. Wow. I just, wow is the word of the day, guys. Ah. <laughs> this is so cool. This is so cool. It's so, such a strong regen yeah. going down. I was like, I don't have to break. This has to be the most extensive bike I have ever ridden. I was like, this could be very gentle. Take care of this man's baby. It's so quiet and smooth. Yeah. It doesn't feel heavy. I was worried at first because the handlebars are so far forward. No one has noticed the electric bikes yet. Ah, oh, there we go. These guys are like, what is that? Yeah, we've had so much rain the last couple of weeks in Wellington and it's really nice to get out on the bike for fun and just in the sun. Like, ah, oh, I miss this. Oh, that Max mustache is so pointy. Let's roll, kiddo. Whee! Oh, okay. Oh, it handles so nicely in turns. This is excellent. <laughs> it's only 50. Oh my God. It's, it's great. <laughs> <laughs> I think I'm going faster and then all of a sudden I look down it's like 56 kilometers <laughs> like that's it but it's finally it's nice to finally open up the throttle just a little bit -da -da -da. oh here we go here we go <laughs> this is the first Harley I've ever ridden it's just not a bike I ever thought I'd ride but I am very impressed good job Harley This is nuts how like just 
It feels so in control in the middle of a turn. Oh, there's a motorcyclist behind us. We'll have the opportunity to wave. Oh, we got the waves. Oh. It just feels solid. I don't know. There's certain vehicles that you drive and you're like, oh, this is gutless. But like, this one just feels solid and it goes and I'm having a great time. So, so cool. This feels so good in a turn. That was awesome. How does it compare to the Zero? Uh, it's a little heavier, but it's barely noticeable. And I don't know, can't tell which one accelerates faster, but maybe it's the different riding style because this one's more leaned over. It just feels like it's going faster than it really is. And I'm like, oh, we're only going like 90 or 80. Gives you a good rush and thrill. A rush and thrill, huh? A rush and a good thrill. <laughs> Jen could not stop talking about this bike days later. She said it was the best electric motorcycle she'd ever ridden, and then went on to say it was the best motorcycle she'd ever ridden. When I first met Dan, his bike was black, but he wrapped it blue to match Ewan's from a long way up. For some reason, Harley didn't offer it in that color, not sure why, but that gave Dan a reason to customize it. He also bought a Corbin seat, which he says is a huge improvement. Servicing these bikes gets a little tricky because there's only one shop in the whole country that can do it, and it's 600 kilometers away in Auckland. Lucky for Dan, he's excited about taking this thing on long road trips. I know the usual combo is an electric bike for commuting and a gas bike for road trips, but the Livewire can do all of that. We've reached the point where you can go electric without needing two bikes. Now that the brand is split off and the bikes are just called Livewires, these might be the only Harley branded electric motorcycles. Who knows, they could actually become collector's items. But the price drop with the new ones is pretty insane because that $22,000 US price suddenly puts it in the same category as Zeros and Energicas. So let's compare. Zero SRF, Energica Evo Rebelle, and the new Livewire. Obviously we're gonna spec out the Zero so its charging speed is on par with the others. And at that point, the Livewire is now the cheapest. And I chose these three because if you want a high performance naked electric bike, these are pretty much the best options we have. Acceleration wise, they're all around 3 seconds. Seems like every new electric motorcycle launches like a superbike. Top speed, if you care about that kind of thing. The Livewire is the slowest, but not by much. When it comes to battery size, the Livewire has a slightly bigger pack than the Zero, but Energica is still untouchable. Dan says it gets about 170Ks of range, which with DC fast charging, that's pretty much all you need. Weight wise, they're not too far off. Those extra chargers on the Zero add up. And yeah, these numbers seem really high, right? They're all really heavy bikes. But it's all about how that weight is mounted in the frame. Like even though the Livewire is 250 kilos, Jen said it felt great. And that's what it comes down to, really. With everything here, specs only tell you so much. You have to actually go out and ride it to see what it's like. Wow, that's fast. So my takeaway was, yes, you're paying a lot for this bike, but you're getting a lot. It has the high-end build quality and DC fast charging of an Energica, but the smooth, quiet belt of a Zero. Also a really low seat like the SRF. Actually, picture a Zero SRF made by a motorcycle company that has 100 years of experience, and that's the Livewire. Like, see this? It's a belt tensioner. Remember Ewan and Charlie getting destroyed on those ruts in South America, and how the belt didn't immediately snap? It's because this company has been doing this a long time. And I think this is what excites me the most about Honda and Yamaha getting into electrics. If the live wire is any indication of what it's going to be like when other big motorcycle companies start making electric bikes, I feel like we won't be disappointed. And this was Harley's first electric bike. Imagine how good the next live wire will be. Riding this bike really blew our minds because neither of us expected to like it this much. But unfortunately, the Zero got upset. Or jealous. I'm not sure what his problem was, but that's a story for another time. Thanks for watching and I'll see you guys next time.